You know, Timmermans thinks that other sectors may also deserve a balloon. And this is what, this is up next, because we, we covered the CO2 border tax, we're going to go into the maritime sector, and, and after that the built environment and transportation sector. Two or three new sectors under ETS. First, the maritime sector. What are the plans of the European Commission to introduce an emission trading scheme in the maritime sector? I mentioned big factories and air, air, uh, aircraft operators are already under the existing ETS, but uh, the European Commission is, uh, is planning to, in, to, to add the maritime sector to it. Um, I mentioned earlier, maritime sector, if you have ships above 5,000 gross tonnage, there was already an obligation for monitoring ver verification, so every ship owner knows how much it emits and has to report it uh, to Europe, basically. But they, so far, they did not have to pay for it. And that is now changing. Um, um, the, the European Commission proposes that it applies uh, to ships from, uh, starting from 5,000 gross tonnage and bigger. Um, by setting that threshold, you avoid that very small-time ship owners, let's say, have to carry the burden of a complex uh, emission trading scheme with reporting, uh, um, um, requirements. So this is, uh, these type of systems typically only work for big companies. So uh, this is why this threshold is set. This does mean that only 55% of ships are covered by this emission trading scheme. However, those 55% of ships cover 90% of total emissions. So if that balloon goes to zero, you actually abated 90% of shipping emissions. So that's quite substantial. Um, who um, is covered under this uh, scheme? Any ships uh, go into EEA ports, so the European Economic Area ports. So also foreign ships going to European ports would have to f fall under this scheme. Between 1990 and 2001, emissions have been rising steeply in the maritime sector. This is exactly why uh, the European Commission thinks that uh, the sector deserves a balloon. Uh, and the projection is without uh, any new policy instruments that emissions are set to rise even further. Um, and actually what they should be on a path uh, to, uh, of 82% uh, emission reduction. Uh, as mentioned, if 90% of the emissions are under this ETS and the balloon goes to zero, you, you would actually meet that target. How big is the maritime sector? Well, the current balloon is, um, uh, or the, the, the emissions of all the uh, companies currently under the ETS is about 1,354 million tons per annum of emissions. The shipping and industry would add about 90 million tons per annum to that system. So it's a little bit more air in the balloon because uh, they obviously get their own emission allowances, um, but it's, it's uh, a small amendment in, in terms of volume of emissions. And there would be an introduction path again for shipping to be included. In 2023, 20% of their emissions uh, would be charged or they would have to hand in allowances for, uh, is, that's actually the mechanism, they would have to pay for and uh, hand in allowances for 20% of the emissions and by 2026 there is full coverage of emissions. Which emissions exactly? Well, 100% of the uh, emissions between European ports and 100% of the emissions when um, uh, ships are in the harbor. Um, so typically onboard systems would still be running uh, and typically marine diesel oil or other um, uh, carbon fuels are, are still burned to do so. Also, when the ship is not sailing, um, um, those emissions also count. And any travel between uh, Europe and non-EU, only 50% of emissions would be covered. Um, so basically, as soon as the European harbor is closer than the American harbor, you're, you're starting to pay. Halfway through down, down, uh, down, the, down the road, down the sea, basically. So how do you reduce emissions in the maritime sector? Well, first of all, operational improvements. By, by reducing speed, there is actually an exponential relationship between speed and fuel use. So by decreasing speed a little bit, you can actually save a lot of fuel. Operational, or, or sorry, uh, technical adjustments and new ship design can, can do a lot. Smaller engines, maybe. Uh, but obviously also sustainable fuels. 
So um, uh, obviously once emissions are charged, that will uh, be a huge um, uh, incentive for, for the uptake and growth for sustainable fuels for the maritime industry. There will also be emission standards on the fuel that is on board. So that's a different directive, but there will be emission standards and that, that will also, uh, th that uh, emission standard will also tighten over time. So that will be another trigger that will probably spur growth and scale up of sustainable fuels for the maritime industry and the infrastructure for it. Because through this regulation, ports and ship owners can anticipate how much sustainable fuel they need and when. And thus, this will end the chicken and egg discussion on developing uh, fueling infrastructure versus designing and building and uh, um, uh, new zero emission ships. So summary on uh, CO2 pricing in the maritime sector. Uh, ships above 5,000 gross tonnage will be included in the existing emission trading scheme. There will be a four-year growth path between 2023 and 2026. Uh, the availability of infrastructure is critical, but CO2 pricing on the one hand and emission standards on the fuel that is on board will probably be a huge push for the development of that infrastructure. And 50% of the travel outside the EU, uh, towards ports outside the EU, is also charged. Um, before we go to the next chapter, quick check on questions. Uh, what is the price of euro, euro per ton of CO2 under the CBAM framework? Um, it's equivalent to the uh, uh, price that European producers pay, pay under the ETS. So currently it's around 60 euros per ton, but it's a market price, could go up, could go down. CBAM certificates would have to be charged at the same price as European producers are currently. So this is also why this reconciliation is done after a year to make sure that that matches. This is still the previous chapter.